you know, it had the unusual composition. We found nickel with very little iron, and the only other place where we see that is in industrially produced nickel alloys. And some of the objects perform in ways that are outside the envelope of known familiar technological objects that are human-made. We live in a universe that refuses to explain itself. Every time we think we understand it, something crosses the boundary of our knowledge. A signal, an object, a shadow, and reminds us how much we still don't know. Today, we explore that boundary through the words of Professor Avi Loeb. We confront the possibility that something, or someone, has already arrived from the stars. I'm responding to anomalies in the data, in other words, things that do not line up with what we expect for rocks or icy rocks, asteroids or comets. In the case of Oumuamua, it was uh, the flat shape that it had uh, based on the variation of reflected sunlight. Uh, and uh, moreover, uh, the fact that it was pushed away from the sun without any uh, evidence for gas or dust around it. Uh, so uh, the standard uh, cometary interpretation was not applicable and the question was what is pushing it and why does it have this unusual shape when data refuses to obey our equations most look away but a few the true explorers stare harder we've cataloged thousands of comets yet one behaved as if it had intentions the idea unsettles us because it forces a question we're not ready to answer what if we've already been observed to understand how fragile our confidence can be we look to the object that changed everything, an interstellar comet we now call 3I Atlas. The surprising fact about 3I Atlas is that it's very big, it's very massive, uh, more than 33 billion tons, and there is just not enough uh, rocky material in interstellar space to deliver such a massive object once per decade. Uh, and uh, moreover, you know, it had the unusual composition. We found nickel with very little iron. And the only other place uh, where we see that is in industrially produced nickel alloys that we use for aerospace applications. But uh, very recently, just yesterday, uh, the object started to show a non-gravitational acceleration when it came closest to the sun. Uh, it's on the opposite side of the sun. We can't observe it from Earth, but we use the solar uh, observatories to look at it and it looks like it's bluer than the sun and uh, i'm just saying that it has a lot of anomalies that indicate that it's not a comet of a type that we are familiar with and therefore we should collect as much data as possible we should be curious rather than insist that it must be a natural comet because the implications are huge a chemical fingerprint can betray a maker if space debris carries a ratio that nature never forged, we must consider the unthinkable, that creation once required intention. Maybe the stars are littered not with rocks, but with relics of civilizations long gone, adrift in cosmic silence. And if that's true, then every anomaly is not just a mystery. It's a message. So far, it didn't show any uh, technological signature that is definitely technological. For example, it didn't maneuver in a very drastic way. We don't have evidence that it released probes that can arrive to Earth, uh, but we should monitor it uh, and we should check if there, are, there is any unusual activity near Earth. We are now living in a new time uh, where we have, have the ability to check how much traffic of technological objects from outside the solar system we might have. We ourselves, you Humanity launched five probes out of the solar system, so it, it's definitely reasonable to imagine that given the 100 billion stars like the Sun in the Milky Way galaxy, and the fact that most of them are older than the Sun by billions of years, that there was uh, another technological civilization, or more than one, uh, capable of uh, sending gadgets that arrive at our backyard. A hundred billion suns, a hundred billion chances. The math of the universe almost demands company, and yet, when that company finally knocks, our first instinct is denial. Still, the unknown doesn't always arrive with threat. Sometimes it arrives with a warning. So NASA is concerned about uh, not creating any panic, any alarm in the public, uh, and they follow the uh, approach of many scientists which are saying we should adopt the most likely interpretation of this object which is that it is a natural comet. This is very often the way that science operates. You 
have uh, uh, possibilities and you adopt the most likely explanation. You have to consider seriously events that have a small likelihood but have a huge impact uh, because when you multiply a small likelihood by a big impact, the outcome it could be devastating and you can't afford allowing for uh, an event like that to happen without preparing for that. The universe plays by statistics, not emotions. Even a one in a million event becomes inevitable given enough space and time. That's why true scientists study possibilities others ignore. Because the smallest probability, if real, can change everything we know. And sometimes ignoring the improbable blinds us to the extraordinary. Once you have enough data, it should become clear whether it is a natural comet or technological. We should see clear signature of a very massive cloud of uh, of gas around it that weighs of order 3 billion tons. If we don't see a very massive cloud of gas around it uh, in the coming months, then it means that this non-gravitational acceleration was provided by something else, perhaps some propulsion system, and that's what we should check for. Propulsion, a word that shouldn't belong to a comet. Every unexplained motion challenges our understanding of physics. Maybe the universe is whispering a new law, or maybe it's showing us technology centuries beyond our reach. Either way, the message is the same. We're still beginners. The deeper we look, the more the mystery spreads, from the objects we see to the secrets we keep. I'm definitely intrigued by the reports uh, of military personnel and the intelligence agencies in the U.S. that are unable to tell the nature of some of the objects uh, in the sky and, and some of the objects uh, perform in ways that are outside the envelope of known familiar technological objects that are human-made. As to whether the U.S. government has information, materials uh, that um, indicate uh, extraterrestrial origin, uh, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. Outside the envelope, beyond the blueprint of our imagination, every era of discovery begins with something that shouldn't exist. Maybe these glimpses are not intrusions, but invitations. A reminder that reality is larger than the walls of our certainty. And in that search, Loeb reminds us of what science was meant to be. Not control, but curiosity. Well, I'm just uh, describing what I know, and uh, I'm allowing myself to ask questions that, you know, any scientist must ask, which is, when you see anomalies in the data, we should wonder what they mean. You know, I've been uh, uh, a practicing physicist for about uh, 50 years now, and, uh, you know, I, I've written more than a thousand scientific papers. That's how science is done. Science is driven by curiosity, We and, and it should be guided by collecting as much data as possible. Science is a privilege of maintaining your childhood curiosity. Wonder is the last honest emotion in science. To ask without ego is to see clearly. When we treat mystery as a threat, we lose what makes discovery possible. The cosmos doesn't punish our ignorance. It rewards our willingness to learn. And what if all this questioning leads to something bigger than us? There is much more real estate in interstellar space outside of the solar system. And, uh, you know, the big picture is that we're missing the point. We are not at the center of the universe. Uh, we don't play an important role, uh, but we should be inspired to to explore it and learn more about it. And, um, you know, in the long term, our civilization will be remembered only if we leave this planet and go elsewhere. We look up at the stars and see distance, but maybe they see potential. If we're not the center, then we're free. Free to wonder, to explore, to fail and try again. That humility is our invitation into the unknown. And in that humility, Loeb gives us one final truth. Discovery isn't about proving others wrong. It's about finding what's real. For now, I'm just suggesting let's observe the sky, collect as much data of all our interstellar visitors and check if any of them might be, you know, a tennis ball that was thrown by a neighbor.